It's a rubber table or something. Yeah, I have I no idea. I have the same table in my from, kitchen. From Pier Almost. 1. Oh, no, I don't. Mine's like, oh, 100 years old. Oh, so I had it. Looks, yeah, it, it was in my family growing up, so I had it refinished, and now it's in my kitchen. But Ladies wish- and gentlemen, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> in my house today, the one and only from Magic 100, Catherine Kitty Dines. Woo! <laughs> I'm my own. So audience. amazing. Yeah, it was hard to get an introduction in there. First, we jumped in right into Carolyn Waldo, who's amazing, who is here. I love Carolyn Waldo. Last week, and we did uh, some synchro out in the driveway on the front lawn. Did you? I haven't posted it yet. I just, I've got it edited. We can look at it after, but it will be posted very soon, and it's uh, <laughs> and it's very amazing, for sure. She's an amazing person. Gold medal, silver medal. Yeah. It's, it's, so what am I doing here? Unbelievable. Here, you can throw those headphones on. Oh, headphones. It's, it's a little Ooh. more intimate, too. You're you know? all hooked up with yeah. all so How does that work? That's good. Whistles. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay. Yeah. And you're sitting off in the corner, which is I unique. Am. Actually, yeah. you know, we had a guy, uh, Sebastian Burgo, a comedian there, and he, but he was all sweaty and he was into it, and he was rubbing. He rubbed Chris Phillips's signature right off. <laughs> yeah, oh, he was wait, right into oh, it. Oh, this is so Chris. I wrote, yeah, I wrote, yeah, I wrote it out uh, so that I could remember what it. Awesome. Yeah, if you can't read the signature, I, there are some great signatures yeah. here. How long have you Amazing. been doing, Henry Burris? Henry Burris, yeah, Grey Cup MVP, uh, the Mayor, Stuntman Stu, Tim Baines, Dylan Black. Who's Stuntman Stu? Uh, <laughs> has been some. <laughs> Some guy who used to be in this city. He had the ear of the city for a, a small amount of time. Mike Ward, comedians, lots of comedians. Mike uh, Mike McDonald, Scott oh. Thompson from Kid in the, Kids in the Hall. <gasps> no, seriously, yeah, Dude, right here. Have, well, yeah, he. I know his did, bum in my chair. His bum was on that chair. Yeah. Oh That's, my goodness, he signed that chair. That's actually. amazing. Yeah, he I has an amazing it. story. Do you know? Have you? You should listen to the, his podcast. I'm, I'm gonna go back and find it. I bet you have no idea how crazy his life. I is going. have read only very little. I'm probably gonna be surprised. He was in the first school shooting in Canada. He walked into it. He was late for school that day. It was in the class he was supposed to be in. He just kept walking in the direction of the the, the gun going off because he had no idea what was happening. People running past him, and a teacher grabbed him, threw him into a classroom. It's a crazy story. Wow! Check out the Scott Thompson. So we just podcast. did a little commercial for your other <laughs> podcast right there. <laughs> well done, Mark. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Is, uh, Thanks for inviting yeah, me. Yeah. I love this area of town. It's mm-hmm. raw. I, or should I better not tell people? Yeah, well, you I, get I post pictures of myself. <laughs> Rockwell Heights. I mean, my son's always like, you know, your phone number is on the internet. I'm like, uh, is it not supposed to be? Isn't it in the phone book still? Oh. It's like, what's the phone book? I said, that's what your mother sits on in the car. No, it's a <laughs> joke. <laughs> there, I that's love joke. This, uh, this little statue. Yeah, this is signed by Mark Breslin. The founder of Yuck Yucks, and it says, Two Mark, one less finger would be perfect. <laughs> it's got the peace sign. It's That's a, awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. That's good, because I went to Toronto and did that podcast, and I brought that for him to sign. You've got another show coming up this Friday, right? Every Friday at Yuck Yucks. Every this Friday. This is like a full-on commercial for me. Every okay. Friday at Yuck Yucks, 7 p.m. Mark I have Hatfield's to go. Friday. You should come this Friday. I have to for go. For sure. Uh, it's only like three or four more weeks until we take the summer off. Nice. But you should definitely come, for sure. Uh, yeah, we've had, I mean, uh, uh, Dylan Black goes for sure all the time. Uh, 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 who else? Lots of people go. You got to read Fage, your table. Derek Fage, Derek of course. Fage, oh yeah. my gosh. He's a regular. Sorry, he's, yeah, yeah. He's there all he's the time. He's one of my favorite Yeah, he's people. been three or four times. He was there last week. He brought his son, his wife. It's uh, He's amazing. I used to host with him sometimes for when sure. he was still in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay, you. Oh, time I'm, for oh, you. I'm terrible at talking about <laughs> I know, me. I know. This is amazing. It's an interview of me. Which Come I on. Love. Deflect, deflect, deflect. Yeah, born and raised uh, in the... Not you're here. You're going to answer questions. Not here. Yeah. Uh, born and raised in the Maritimes, mm-hmm. Fredericton, New Brunswick. Oh, uh, often called the snotty city, but it's not true. Why is it snotty? Uh, I don't know. When I was going through college, mm-hmm. I uh, a lot of Maritimers are up in Ontario, and I was at uh, Loyalist College in Belleville, and there are all these girls from Moncton and, and different maritime cities, and um, you know, you don't know people until you start partying with them. And uh, one of the first things, actually, a lot of people said, "Oh, wow, we figured because you were from Fredericton, you were really snotty," mm-hmm. and that's just a common theme. I don't know if it's still true, but really? it was true. I in- never heard that, but yeah. truer words have never been said. You don't know people tell you've partied exactly, with them, right? exactly. <laughs> so yeah, and I don't remember most of what happened. So <laughs> well done, that's success. I believe that's the actual definition of it. I don't remember how it went. Uh, brothers and sisters, no. Whoa, only child. I had a, a little sister through Big Brothers Big Sisters mm-hmm. um, who uh, I met when I was in my very early 20s in one of my first broadcasting jobs. I just wanted to give back to the community. And uh, one of the most rewarding 
things I have ever done. It was obviously long before I had my own kids, mm-hmm. but uh, I it was it was amazing to see how that organization works. I'm still in touch with her today. Wow. She's all grown up, has a very successful career with uh, the Canadian Red Cross. Mm-hmm. She's married with her own family, and it's really nice to see. There's a lot of kids in the the program who definitely need mentors, and they're always looking for people to sign up to be mentors. Mm-hmm. So was that in Fredericton? I did that in St. John, New oh, Brunswick. John. Okay, but. Big brothers, big sisters here in, mm-hmm. in Ottawa, they are always looking for help too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, great, for sure. Yeah. Uh, amazing organization. Your parents, uh, what were they doing in, in Fredericton? Uh, Fredericton? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, we can't get into my life. It's so it's so tragic. Oh, perfect. Um, it's so tragic. <laughs> yeah. um, my mom died when I was really little, like Whoa. a baby, four okay. months old. Wow. And then, uh, uh, and I was raised more by my grandmother mm-hmm. and then uh, an aunt in, in growing up and a little bit by my dad, but we, we probably shouldn't go down that path. We, we want to keep it fairly upbeat and light. <laughs> I would anyway. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm a message received. So uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, you with the grandmother and aunt in a, in a house in Fredericton. And uh, what would you dream of when you were a child? What uh, would you want to be? D- oh my gosh, when I was a kid. Uh, do you remember the Jackson 5? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> that was the first show that really... Oh, the TV show. The TV show, okay. yeah. Okay. Sorry, what would you think? I- oh, oh, like oh, A, B, well, C. But, well, yeah, One, yeah. Two, three. But they were But they were on TV all the time performing. Oh, okay. And uh, I was just so infatuated with the Jacksons. And that was the first time I realized, wow, I want to grow up and be a performer. Mm-hmm. Like I want to, this is what I want to do. I want to be a performer. So I was in a church choir from the time I was like four. Okay. Um, a lot of fun. Like mm-hmm. I, that, I didn't like the church part of it as much, but the singing, like I was at church every day, mm-hmm. like almost, but the singing part was, uh, was super cool. You still, cool. still a singer? No, no. Uh, I stopped doing like that Jackson a long Fox. time ago, a long <laughs> time ago. I think, I think to be a successful artist, especially today, but, but, all along you have to have a really thick skin mm-hmm. you have to be able to like not everybody's going to be perfect all the time mm-hmm. one of the things i love about ed sheeran is how he talks about how horrible a singer he was mm-hmm. when he first started out okay. and now look at him mm-hmm. i just i didn't have the patience i was like i'm done i'm done and it, it you know i got a lot of heckle like i had some really good shows mm-hmm. i did it a lot for charity mm-hmm. um and uh but then, you know, a few bad shows, some heckling, and uh, I was done. I was like, obviously, I'm not meant to do this. Yeah. So I'm just sure. moving on. Next thing. I always wanted I always wanted to get good at things, like, really fast. And mm-hmm. and now as a parent, I yeah. have to explain that to my kids, too. You have to practice. That's you right. have to stay at it. Mm-hmm. So it's on the bucket list, though. I, I always wanted to do a CD in case I had kids, uh, grandkids someday. Mm-hmm. So that I could do. It sounds like you're pretty much you're into this. I, I mean, am if, really if that's into That's a possibility. This. I am really what's into your, this. What's your your go-to song? You had a few drinks. Karaoke machine is out. What do you? What's the? Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> tub thumping. <laughs> like like what, what? if I've had a few drinks, yeah. it's gonna be something. What's that? I don't even know what that is. Chumbawamba. It's it was like a one-hit wonder. It, yeah, it? you gotta. We'll Google it after. No, I'll show it go? you. How, how, okay, no, 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 bars. no. That's so not it happening. Sounds so familiar. So not happening. Chumbawamba. No, uh, a lot of um. I like a lot of Michael Jackson stuff, like my, yeah. especially because my, um, my 15 year old, she's really into it now. Mm-hmm. I love Eminem, but I haven't perfected the rap performance. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know. You know what? To tell you the truth, I wouldn't know what a go to song would be. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe something more melodic by Adele, or, oh, but she's so hard to sing her stuff. Like mm-hmm. she's so hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelly Clarkson would be a good one. Pink, Pink's. Pink's one of my favorites, mm-hmm. so I'd probably I'd probably pick a song that was like super empowering. For those are like all dance music, right? Like um, par- party tunes. Not, I'm getting the total vibe here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dance music, yes, but they have some pretty awesome power ballads, like mm-hmm. very deep, meaningful power ballads. In fact, I do like a concert where you can dance and it's like really lively. Yeah. So when uh, Magic 100 took a busload of people to Montreal to see Adele, mm. as much as I love Adele's music, I thought I was going to be bored. I thought, how am I going to sit through a whole concert of Adele? Like, it's pretty sad music. Yeah. Like, most of her stuff is pretty slow. It was phenomenal. I was mesmerized. She, her voice is just so powerful mm-hmm. and mesmerizing. So uh, it was... It was 
it was awesome. Yeah, concerts are so awesome now, aren't they? They are. Like, even compared to when we were younger, you know, I used to go to concerts, but you didn't even hear the music really well. It was more just being there. But now the show is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. What was? Yeah. What do you like to listen to? Uh, well, I went to Guns N' Roses. Uh, Did this you? This summer, yeah. My son, my <laughs> kids love all kinds of music for sure. They love the '70s rock. My kid, one kid, we went through a Michael Jackson stage uh, not that long ago, and we had the whole one glove hat dance uh, performances here uh, almost <laughs> nightly. Now they're into rock and roll. That one plays the drums, one plays the guitar, and one plays video games. That's wow. the three of them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's but a nice is, mix. You could have your own family the, band. You mentioned you would do something for a little while and then quit, but that's you know that's trying things as a kid, it's right? It's true. And then you also mentioned that to be an artist, you need to be really thick skinned You need to just be able to shrug off, uh, shrug off those bad days and keep going. And because it, it is about longevity, it's all about doing it over and over. Yep. And that's how you get better at things, right? We don't improve unless we make, make mistakes, and it's it's hard to to take on those mistakes and then to, to realize that's the growth process. I've made so many mistakes. I should mm-hmm. be an expert. I'm mm-hmm. not, but I should be. <laughs> and you keep smiling and keep uh, moving. And have you have voice. to. Yeah, like, the, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Like. So what was the first step towards, uh, like, journalism school, I would imagine? I, well, I started in university, mm-hmm. and it was not for me. I, I loathed every moment. I, it was so dry and so boring, and you're in this class with 200 people, mm-hmm. you know, studying Hemingway, trying to figure out how is this going to help me and whatever I wanted to do. Ooh. But at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Hemingway's got to be helpful. Uh, well, <laughs> I yeah, not to say that I don't. I've, I've still got some books at home, but uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I think that was the biggest problem. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. I think that if I had followed my heart when I was really young, I would have stuck with drama, mm-hmm. but it didn't seem tangible enough, mm-hmm. or, or music, but it didn't seem tangible enough. A kid from the Maritimes, small town Maritimes, was never going to make it anywhere. That was the message I got over and over again. Yeah. Oh, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. That's that's for somebody else. And I'm thinking, well, why not me? Mm-hmm. Like I kept thinking, well, why not me? But uh, you hear it enough and you start to believe it, mm-hmm. like that you won't be able to do anything like yeah. that. So I let I let a lot of haters and a lot of, uh, I don't think necessarily they were haters though. And in some cases, I think it's just, there's a lot of fear out there. I grew up in a very religious family mm-hmm. and it, there was a lot of fear. Mm-hmm. And um, I think if you let that message get to you, then it can shut you down mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And that's definitely what I allowed it to do. And, uh, but I didn't know that there were options. Like mm-hmm. if you're, if you're being raised in a really small box, yeah. you don't know, you, you're you not being shown the options. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I was always curious. I remember, I remember being like 10 singing, like, Oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember the artist. I always used to think it was the Cassidy's, but it wasn't, it was, uh, I gotta get out of this place if it's the last thing I ever do. Remember that one? Uh, I'd sing no. into the broom as I was doing my chores yeah, yeah, yeah. because I felt like I gotta get out of here if I'm gonna do anything with yeah, my yeah. life because I felt so closed off. Yeah. I felt like there was so much more out there in the world that I wanted to see. Yeah. So, yeah, just um, I don't even remember what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome. That's like art inspiring you, yeah. right? Oh, like a yeah. Oh, yeah. Or... Yeah, how I got to here. Yeah. So it just, I feel like it was a, I never really, yeah, every time I planned, like I wanted to be Oprah at one point. I wanted to be mm-hmm. Ellen at one point. Like I always had these supernova dreams, okay. right? Like these crazy, over the top, over the moon dreams for myself. Mm -hmm. And I never quite hit the bar on any of them. Mm -hmm. You know, life throws you curveballs and then you just kind of make the best of it and Mm -hmm. you, uh, you deal and you rework your situation. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I feel like I've been doing my whole life, just stumbling along and, you know, keep like walking. all of us, pretty yeah. much. Uh, yeah. So was the Oprah dream, uh, it's funny to say the Oprah dream, <laughs> <laughs> was the Oprah dream <laughs> something from like, right after you realized that the university wasn't for you or was, um, it, was it the reason you went to university? No, it wasn't the reason. The reason I went to university is I think like a lot of people go to university because you think, well, that's the next step. Got to okay. go to school, got to, you know, move on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did what a lot of people do. General arts didn't really have a direction and I figured I'd, you know, it would come to me like yes. an epiphany, an aha moment, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, then, so what did you take at school? It was broadcasting, me? right? Well, eventually, Okay, oh, but okay. that was after a couple of years of university. So I had I had my aha moment. I was working about three jobs, going to university, um, struggling, trying to get to class every day because I was exhausted all the time um, from three jobs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I did something that I never thought I would see myself doing because of my grandma, and uh, 
God love her. God rest her soul. She was an amazing person. She was such a loving person, and she really became like my mom. But uh, I, I entered a, I entered the Miss Fredericton pageant. Oh wow! You know, but I surprisingly, I, I, I was, uh, I wasn't super into it. But I said, you know, what? I'll do it. I'll do it. But I learned so much. I didn't realize how much you learn in those things. Yeah. Like they teach you so many things like about high tea and how to ballroom dance mm-hmm. and they, it, public speaking. Like we yeah. had oh, all wow. this public speaking really? uh, workshop stuff. And yeah. I was just like, wow, I didn't know this was part of it. I thought it was just prancing around yeah. in bathing suits. And, you know, you got a chance to, I, I sang. That was my talent. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I only was, I was fourth runner up. So oh, I wow. didn't, I didn't even get to be with the three on stage. <laughs> I was fourth runner up. But I learned, it was a, it was a huge learning curve for me. And through that, the public speaking love, um, because I went up and I, I was so nervous. It was like an okay. impromptu thing. You you pick a topic out of the hat and then someone asks you this question and yeah. you're on the spot. And my first response was to make a joke. Yeah. Because that was that helped me feel better was to make a joke. And everybody laughed and then I felt better. And then I gave this speech and everybody was like, whoa, it's so good. I didn't even remember what I said. Yeah. It was just, you know, it, I was 18. And... Um, it was, I think the question was something about, would you like to be a mother? Why or why not? Heavy question mm-hmm. for an 18 year old. Yeah. And at that point, no, mm-hmm. like I had no, I, you know, no plans. But um, someone said to me very shortly after that time, like, have you ever thought about being a reporter or going into broadcasting? You're, you're a very good public speaker, mm-hmm. which I didn't even think of myself. Yeah. And uh, I was like, no. I'd never crossed my mind. So then I started doing all this research. Well, how can that I make that happen? And mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I looked at all the possibilities, all the schools, and uh, I essentially I applied to so many. And I essentially the first person, first school to accept me. I was like, okay, done. Let's go. Wow. I just wanted the plan, and I wanted to get away. Yeah. I wanted to get away. So, uh, and that's how it happened. Isn't and it, I, st- yeah, that's amazing how the one person saying something to you can inspire uh, the rest of your life. Yeah, isn't it? Like I, I can think back to my football days when. I was struggling, although I wanted to make it to the NFL and, and you know, questioning my whether I could or not. And just the right person at the right time saying, hey, you know, are you going to play in the NFL? Just a question that leads a little bit of possibility there is enough to fuel you for days, right? Yeah, So, absolutely. I mean, it shows the power of, of the word. And you've had, you've, word. You, you worked in, like, all over the place, like, everywhere, like... Like football. football yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a it was a struggle for many years to to achieve what I did, and uh, you know, it was through the help of other people and realizing that it's about making mistakes and, and moving forward. And, and when things happen, then it's your reaction to them that decides whether or not there's going to be a positive outcome. And that's the message I spread now. I go to schools about one a week and you know teach people how to set goals and overcome obstacles and just be use the use of confidence in the words that you tell yourself. And it's through doing that made me a more confident person and made myself uh, much happier. That's right? amazing. Yeah, purpose, you know. And, that's like, impo- and I think that's super important because I honestly feel that there's, I know there's a lot out there. I know uh, you were at the Proud to Be Me, yeah. the, the Bully Free Gala that mm-hmm. just happened a few weeks ago. And I think that's an amazing gala. There's so many cool things going on. Yeah. But I've been in the schools a lot. I volunteered a lot with my girls, especially when they were younger. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see stuff, you hear stuff. As a parent, I always wanted to have my ear to the ground. Yeah. Kids need it mm-hmm. because there's so many other messages out there competing yep. for those positive <sighs> messages. And you cannot have enough positive messages. Yep. So it's like high five, everybody. Oh, yeah. I high mean, five. everybody doing something yeah. like that to give back and to, uh, to spread it. And, and, you know, who knows who you're going to inspire yep. to do what, right? Mm-hmm. Like... Wouldn't be cool. To, have you had kids like that come back to you and say, thanks, Mark? Every like, time. Yeah. Every time, for sure. It's uh, at the uh, Dave Smith uh, Youth Treatment Center. Yeah. Uh, I, I go and speak there. I've spoke there lots of times. And uh, in their newsletter one time for the graduating students, it was like, you know, what's inspired you over? And one of them was about when I went there and spoke to them and how it's, you know, he's learned to set goals. And now he's, he's after I spoke, he went and applied at a university or a college and he got accepted and his life is on track. And like, just that's the reason that's why awesome. I drove out there that's in a car awesome. that mightn't have made it. And, you know, and, and don't you feel like even if you can help one person like that, that's enough. I mean, you're obviously helping <laughs> yeah. more, but it's like if one person right. can benefit from something that comes out of your mouth mm-hmm. and yeah, like mm-hmm. 
Hello. And what people don't understand too is when you do something like that, there is a selfish part of it because it makes me feel fantastic. Yeah, but right? that's an okay selfish part of it. Yeah, though, that, I yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Like when you're looking for like you know how to be happy or how to have a purpose in your yeah. life and, and that have a great feeling from yeah. something. It's not necessarily about buying something new or watching something on TV, but it's about going out there doing something for someone else and not expecting anything back. Exactly. And you can't help other feel, people feel good about themselves if you don't help yourself feel good. Right. So if that helps you feel good how, like it's a no-brainer right mm -hmm. I, that's the way i feel for sure so let's have some tea because you like oh, tea. tea and this is I've, the first I'm, maybe this tea is, this makes me so happy this that is you, high tea you read that i love tea yeah, yeah, yeah okay so this could be i love coffee too but only tea oh. in the afternoon okay that's only tea in the afternoon isn't that funny yeah that's high a tea. mug that i got uh, two oh, weeks ago from mattawa a uh, high school in mattawa oh really for speaking there yeah it was a, oh, it's, like that's lovely. I have no idea. Now, what, it, you did you put milk in it? Uh, it depends. What type of tea is it? I have no idea. You you have no idea. Okay. You just kind of went it's in the uh, cupboard. And yeah, it says uh, awake English breakfast. Oh, is that good or English bad? breakfast is my favorite. Of course it is. I, it's it's totally my favorite. It's a Tazo tea, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I just so when I do like I just do I get made fun of for the milk I put in my tea. Like mm -hmm. I just like just just enough mm -hmm. to take just to make it just. A little less dark. Okay. I don't like sense. it. I don't like it too light. Yeah. Just yeah. It's, I'm sure it's delicious. Mmm. Yeah. Tea is good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Less a little less harsh than the black coffee I normally drink in the afternoon. I know. I know. But I, I that's I can't. You drink black coffee all the time. All day long. Yeah. Ooh. See, I oh, see. I used to be a. I used to be a twelve cup coffee person. Now it's like two cups twelve max. Twelve cups uh, of coffee. It was coffee? awful. Oh, it was awful. I used to, and now it's two cups in the morning, and I try really hard not to drink it after 9 a.m. Wow. Sleep issues, yeah. Oh, really? Insomnia. After 9 a.m.? You, you'd think I'd figured out that a long time ago, yeah. having insomnia my whole life. <laughs> I remember going to the doctor, how much coffee do you drink? And he just kind of puts his clipboard down, raises his glasses, mm-hmm, and yeah. you're having sleeping issues. <laughs> and some people say that they're not affected, though. So I always figured, you know, oh, that can't yeah. be it. Lots of people say coffee doesn't affect them. I have a question about insomnia because, I mean, I don't suffer. I mean, there are nights when I can't get to sleep, but then I just, I watch, I do something else. Isn't that, like, isn't it a benefit? Like, you know. Yes. Yes. So yes. Actually, that was one of the recommendations that if I'm tossing and turning, yeah. that you get up, you leave your bedroom. Yeah. Um, and you go do something else quiet, nothing, yeah. nothing like that's going to stimulate your heart, like mm -hmm. no exercising, no elliptical, uh, just something quiet. So maybe read a book. I guess you could read in bed, but um, I was told to save the bedroom for sleeping mm -hmm. and nothing else. Oh, wow. To do nothing else in the bedroom but sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe yeah. maybe a few other things. Yeah. Um, but no, so that is, yeah, go do something else mm. just to, but something quiet, like even meditation. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll go turn on a fireplace. Yeah. Just flick it on because looking at flame is Ooh. apparently it makes you sleepy. Yeah, for sure. Just looking at that mesmerizing flame. It's amazing. It's not quite the same as a real fire. I used to have a real fireplace and then moved. Now I've got a gas fireplace. Oh, yeah. But it's easier Oh, you could do it with a candle too, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You can do it with a candle. I have a wood burner, burning fireplace. Yeah. I use it like every day because it's just do you so. Use it every oh, day? yeah, it's been on all morning. For You're sure. you also are a firefighter. I'm fire, a firefighter. Fire, fire, firefighter. Yes, I'm a firefighter. Um, so because you got to be careful with the. See, I never, I didn't have that many fires because I was so paranoid. I read about carbon monoxide poisoning, mm -hmm. and you have to have it out. And then there's something about closing the doors. You got to close the doors yeah. when you put it out but, for the night to make sure there's no. But you can get that from a, a gas fireplace. Oh, don't and tell I, me that. I, I, everything, that has, like... everything that has gas, anything that, you know, burns carbon. <sighs> right? I mean, but I thought it was more efficient. Just get a detector. Okay. Just get a carbon monoxide detector. I do. I have, I have like three. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. I do. Actually, when I moved to my new place almost two years ago, I, uh, I met... I met a bunch of firefighters who had all these side businesses mm -hmm. and I had one come and rewire. There was a bunch of wiring issues. Yeah. So one came and he rewired some stuff that was sketchy mm -hmm. uh, and checked out other Who's stuff. Um, oh gosh. A lot of talented people. Uh, yeah. I, you know what? Uh, Alec? Alec? <gasps> Alec? No idea who that is. Okay. But. Alec. I can't remember Alec's last name. He's only He only came the once and it was almost two years ago. Okay. Uh, I found him through, do you know Eric Portner? No. Hi, Eric. Eric's on Facebook, but he's never... He's never, Eric Portner actually takes care of my pool. Oh, pool guy. Yeah, pool guy. Wow. Um, and he hooked me up with Alec and he also hooked me up with, uh, he's hooked me up with a couple people now. Oh, yeah. um, somebody did a little painting for me. Wow. Um, Amazing. 
uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Can There's Brent Donnelly. Do you know yeah, Brent Donnelly? Yes. Ever okay? Everybody knows Brent Donnelly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Brent Donnelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did some acting with Brent over the years. Okay, you must have. Uh, have been? I don't. I've never worked with him. I've never. I just know as a firefighter is. or uh, yeah, firefighter. Okay. As you've anything. never worked with him as yeah. a firefighter. No, I can't be an actor. I can't do other people's lines ever. I've tried a couple auditions. Well, that's, and I'm terrible but that would at it. be cool. Then you could just improv all your lines. Uh, yeah, if I was allowed, but no one's ever given me that opportunity. Just you don't. You just take the opportunity. You just do it. <laughs> just go for you it. You do for sure. I like that. That's good. Okay, so you're in university. Uh, you let's let's uh, help me out here. You're in. You're, you're, What's the Hemingway class? Is that the broadcasting or is that No, no, sciences? that was just, that was English. That okay. was, yeah, that was just an English okay. class. I, I just, I love Hemingway. And so you got me stuck on, that. I, it'll be a fun have class Have you ever to been take. to, what's the hotel in Cuba and Havana that uh, you used to write in? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I've been there. And yeah. also in um, Key West. Yeah, I've of, never well, been. Well, his house is there. Never been it's, there. It's an amazing trip. Okay. Yeah, what you, what you do is you Not go. Not Key West. You've been, been to Cuba. I've been to Havana, yeah. Yeah, well, Key West is very similar. It's like, it's a mixture of Florida and Cuba. It's an interesting, oh. yeah, it's like no other place in the United States for well, sure. Well, I'll it's put very, that on the list. It is very, th- almost third worldish. It's It's kind of neat and it's dominated by Hemingway stuff for sure. His house is there with all the cats and it's, uh, you read his books and it's like a lot of them are based at a bar there and you go to the, I mean, it's a I love that, semi-touristy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very touristy. Who's kidding who? But it's a lot of fun and it's cool. Cool. For sure, and his books are awesome. Yes, so you're you decided to go to broadcasting school. What's the first job out of uh, out of broadcasting school? Uh, it was a radio job in St. John, New Brunswick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wasn't there quite a year. I I I um, focused on TV when I was okay. in school, so I was like determined to get into TV. Um, so I went from there to a TV radio combo mm-hmm. in the Maritimes with. Uh, so it was like I think K100 was the name of the station. I think it still exists. Um, and then I went to CHSJ MITV mm-hmm. and Irving owned, you must know the Irving, Irving family. Yeah. Yes. For sure. So Irving owned a company mm-hmm. in the Maritimes. And then I took off out West to work for a company called RDTV that no longer exists. Mm-hmm. I know that. Uh, and then I, ca- and then I landed in Ottawa because I married and divorced an Ottawa boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, that was when you were having the Oprah dreams when you were getting into TV. Um, yeah, I think... I think even before I went to broadcasting school, I think while I was doing all the research, I'd always loved Oprah. Mm-hmm. And we all and love Oprah. Yeah. Well, I, I watched a, like a lot of the shows, mm-hmm. Sally, Jesse Raphael, mm-hmm. Geraldo. Um, Geraldo, but Oprah was in a category all of her own. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I loved the motivation and the sincerity. I loved her story. Yes. I loved that she was told she was too ugly for TV mm-hmm. and now look at her. Yeah. So I love inspiring underdog stories. Mm-hmm. Most mm-hmm. of us, I think, do. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I just, yeah, I, that's that's what I kind of... What's your yeah. underdog story? Oh my gosh, don't go there. Uh, I don't want to talk about all. It's very tragic. Oh, I'm really? writing. I'm writing some scripts about it. It's easier. Really? I'm right. Ri- actually, I've been writing a book. I feel like it's been my whole life, but mm-hmm. I've been writing a book for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I but not really based based loosely on some of my experiences. Mm-hmm. Not particularly about my life, but based loosely mm-hmm. on some of the stuff I've been through. Um, uh, yeah. And I, I've got a. I would love to do like some scripts. I've actually been talking to a few people about script writing ideas. I've taken some script writing studies, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just I think a matter of doing it. You know, yeah, you always want to perfect everything until you get it perfect, mm-hmm. and sometimes you just have to. Okay, just do it. Here it is. That's right. It's, it's give it. Yeah. This and is I it. and I've actually been talking to a few uh, singer songwriters about uh, developing some of my my lyrics. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So I'd rather focus on the positives. I, I just, I, 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 I had a lot of anxiety and depression growing up. Mm-hmm. So I was in and out of the hospital quite a bit. But I didn't realize it was anxiety and depression okay. at the time. You, at that time, I think you just get labeled a problem kid, mm-hmm. uh, a troublemaker, a black sheep, whatever you want to call it. Um, when I was having my anxiety and uh, panic attacks and stuff, it kind of manifested like the flu. Like okay. I would literally be burning up and throwing up and... Um, it, it still happens, but not nearly as much because I know what it is now. Yeah. Like I actually got diagnosed. Um, and now I can, I recognize my triggers. I can avoid my triggers. I can meditate. I can do all these things that I didn't know how to do then. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not pretty. Uh, I did, I did try to take my own life more than a few, more than once growing up. Um, 
mostly I think it came from a lack of understanding and knowledge about what was happening to me Mm -hmm. and feeling like, you know, I was a bad person because I think other people didn't understand it either. Uh, And when you know better, you do better, right? Mm -hmm. And there's more knowledge. There are more programs. I think that's why I do volunteer so much for mental health Mm -hmm. um, fundraising and, and programs here in the community because I've talked to a lot of people who've been through some of the same things mm-hmm. and it's it's heartbreaking and I know I've been there. Mm-hmm. I, I know what that feels like and I also know there's a way out of it but, but sometimes it takes a long time to find your way out of it and I've, you know, I've run into a lot of, uh, it took me a long time and I go through, I still, I, I still therapist hop, mm-hmm. like I find you got to find the right person who works okay. for you. If you're not clicking with that person mm-hmm. or if you're uncomfortable, like, I mean, you've got to be able to feel at ease talking to somebody. And I mean, I've been in sessions where, and this was mostly when I was young, where I sat there and the therapist said nothing to me the whole time. And mm-hmm. then I left mm-hmm. and I thought, well, what the hell was that? Like, I don't get that. Yeah. So you have to keep searching until you figure out what works best for Mm -hmm. you what resonates with you because not every therapist will and that's what a lot of people don't hear they think oh I went to therapy it didn't work but that's not how it works Mm -hmm. like you have to keep at it and then therapists will say are you ready to work on your issues Mm -hmm. well and most people will say well yeah but then they don't want to do the work right like they're still engaging in bad habits or doing things that are going to lead them back down Mm -hmm. a bad path yeah and that's the thing if you want to move forward you have to be willing to let go of certain things Mm -hmm. and and move forward like that's what you're there for Mm -hmm. so therapists want to get to the people who do who really do want to do the work yeah they want to get to the people who want to be healthy Mm -hmm. who want to learn how to be healthy and uh and that's sometimes where people get stuck because you go in circles Mm -hmm. you don't what what is the work What, what do you have to do well, you have to figure out what works for you. And mm-hmm. it's different for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, meditation is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, breathing exercises, exercise in general. Yeah, for sure. Exercise in general is super huge for me. Uh, certain foods, like mm-hmm. having a healthy diet is super huge. Yeah. Um, and I go through periods where this past year, I think I mentioned to you on the way in, I had a bad car accident mm-hmm. where I'm still dealing with concussion symptoms. Yep. And... I, that really affected my brain. Like Mm -hmm. it, it threw me into a ridiculous depression, like unbelievable, like even worse than stuff that I'd gone through. And I was warned that that could happen. Like it could, Mm -hmm. you know, make it worse. Um, and then I found myself like just completely diving in, like crawling into a chip bag and just, ah, you know, and just, and eating my feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did ate a lot of really horrible foods that I probably shouldn't have over the past year and I'm just now Mm -hmm. starting to get back on like exercising regularly I was I was biking a lot in the summer um balance has been an issue for me and stuff like that Mm -hmm. but finding what works yeah like exercise I don't think a lot of people understand how powerful exercise is like there are a lot of people I've talked to and they oh I I just don't have time because then it's like yeah you have time yeah you've you've got Mm -hmm. you've got to make it a priority like you've got to say okay I'm done. You got to put the work away Mm -hmm. and then you've got to, you know, for me, I can't do gyms right now because it's, they're so noisy and really hard on my head. Mm -hmm. So I got the elliptical set up in the basement. I'm mostly doing cardio Mm -hmm. right now. I do a little bit of like light weights and stuff like that, but it's mostly cardio to get the blood flowing and stuff like that. But those endorphins are so important Mm -hmm. and if you're not getting them and and sunshine like getting outside connecting with nature take a walk in the woods i know so powerful i know yeah we uh we love going to gatineau park Uh, a little closer to home stony swamp is not far it's out off of richmond near uh hunt club Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful that you know you can feed the chickadees we just did that this weekend it's you wait there i know (laughs) you don't even have to i've got video just this past weekend there were three of them that flew into my daughter's hand boom 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 like within 20 seconds it was amazing um and just connecting with nature is so huge Mm -hmm. and uh i mean i i think that works for everybody though whether you want to admit it or not like Mm -hmm. getting outside not just staying cooped up because Mm -hmm. for people with depression and anxiety we tend to want to just stay under our covers Mm -hmm. and not do anything and um we get overwhelmed easily Mm -hmm. with if like we have too much on our plate if we if we look at too many things 
then we're like, ah, and then we can't do yeah. stuff. You have to break it down and mm-hmm. just do kind of like one thing at a time, focus on one thing at a time. And, uh, but, you know, making all those, connecting the dots, I, I call it, like you have to, you know, pick some things that you can do and uh, don't try to overdo it. I tend to try to overdo everything. Like mm-hmm. I tend to put too much into my day, yeah. which is another reason I'm still dealing with all these post-concussion symptoms, mm-hmm. not listening to my physiotherapist. So, but, What do you do for physiotherapy? Like, I, I retired because of professional football because of a terrible concussion for sure. Oh. And it affected me for years. I couldn't even watch football for years. Like you said, the sounds, loud sounds, nothing. Even even tracking, like I can't watch hockey right now because oh. I can't, my eyes can't track the puck. Yep. Like it I, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I had a high pitched sound in my head for at least three months. I couldn't uh, hear very well. Did you completely block out? Uh, oh yeah, I was out on the field, like stumbled and I played the rest of the game because nobody saw it happen and I didn't know what was happening and I was completely like in and out of consciousness and I can remember like waking up sometimes and the play was over and looking around and like, I guess I'd done it, but you know, and then getting back into like, it was a terrible, terrible experience. And then I took an airplane the next day, which just exacerbated the whole problem. And, uh, yeah. And I was living by myself and, or with roommates who didn't really care what I was doing. I mean, they they were friends, but they were roommates. So I would leave the house and not come back for two days. Don't even know what I'd done. Like it was a, it was a crazy, crazy time in my life for sure. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, at the time there was no real solution. It was like, are you better yet? was just all they would kind of do. Yeah. And it was experimental. And I know it still is like, it's a very complicated thing, your brain, right? When it, yeah. sometimes there is no solution, but time, right? And um, yeah. I, I mean the, the exercise is, I, I keep hearing, you know, it's super important to get that blood pumping through your brain mm-hmm. and water hydration mm-hmm. is super important and eating properly, getting the right fatty acids and stuff mm-hmm. like, so that your brain can heal. And, um, so that's, that's why. One of the things that uh, a physiotherapist and my doctor have uh, been drilling into my head, like, and um, I have some back issues and neck issues too because okay. of it. But, uh, mm-hmm. but um, they they do, we they, we do different things every time I go, mm-hmm. and uh, rest like sleep. Like Mm -hmm. that's super, super, super important is resting your brain Mm -hmm. and not, uh, the multitasking and not looking, not looking at screens too much, like giving your eyes a rest, things like that. Um, they, we've tried so many different things. I just found out about a new, I can't even tell you about it because I haven't even looked at it yet, but Annette Groner from CTV morning live, apparently she had some issues back in 2013 Mm -hmm. And, uh, for over three years before she got, oh, wow. yeah, got help. And she, that was just from, she wasn't even out. It was like, she got whiplash mm-hmm. tubing Yeah. and I'm like, okay, I had unfortunately had concussions growing up too, um, that probably were never treated properly because of the lack of information right. at the time. Um, and I think the older you get, unfortunately can also play a part. Yes. Yeah. So I like the, uh, I like the physiotherapist, uh, Jody Wilson is who I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. She seems to really know her stuff. She's hooked me up with an eye doctor who specializes. So I'll hopefully be seeing that person really soon too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, taking care of your brain, like it's, I think we're all super hypersensitive yep. about it now mm-hmm. and people are taking it more seriously like than yep. than when oh, yeah. probably when you went yeah, through oh, it um, banging your banging your heads together used to be what you did in football yeah, right? i know <laughs> my my doctor was like she looked at me and she's like it's it's your brain and yeah. i'm like yeah so yeah, it'll heal hard, yeah. hard head. She goes, yeah. you don't understand. Like, and then they show you diagrams of what actually happens in your head when you're getting a concussion and mm. you're like, okay, okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I mean, yeah. So can you imagine taking your like computer and like smashing it into things on purpose? Like that's exactly no, what you're doing right? No. and expecting it to work properly. One of my favorite things that they've done is that they've given me this walking test. So they put a, like they'll put a, a dot or something on the wall mm-hmm. and then I'm supposed to be walking towards it while I don't know, doing something else with my hands. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's like I'm drunk. I can't do it. Like I'm wa- I'm, I'm wobbling all over the place. And I'm like, it looks like it's supposed to be pretty easy, but yeah. I'm just, my balance is still off a little bit. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Some of the things, cause you think, oh, I can do that. And then you start doing it. It's like, oh, I guess I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did all kinds of things. I listened to like all kinds of like classical music, electronic music. I would uh, draw pictures. I would, uh, I would read. I started trying to read upside down to see if it would oh, help my good. brain. It was all bizarre. I've yeah. been trying to play ping pong with my left oh, hand. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> like yeah. My, and fun. In, in, yeah. It's, it's very fun. Um, <laughs> it's hard to track the ball with your eyes, but it's, it, but yeah. like I've been trying to get my left hand doing things to get my brain sort mm. of, um, but word games 
games were recommended, yeah. like Scrabble or Sudoku mm -hmm. or Scategories, mm -hmm. like just doing Scategories even on your own, like just looking at a yeah. word and then trying to come up with things. Going to a comedy club would be good. Going to comedy club. Making <laughs> laughing. Laughter is a good for healer. Sure. Uh, yeah. Totally. Laughter is good mm -hmm. medicine. I, do, I You know what? I prefer watching uh comedies over anything else mm -hmm. like i watch with my girls we watch more comedies i think than anything else mm -hmm. like uh I'm trying to think well, well letter kenny's a good one yep. uh uh really love Shit's creek mm -hmm. um canadian ones it's good oh yeah modern family is a favorite mm -hmm. um oh there's so many but oh the goldbergs have you watched no, the goldbergs it's 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 a it's an 80s show it's like uh, this family in oh. the 80s and there's so many 80s references yeah. they reference all the main iconic things from the 80s uh, and netflix? it is is it on netflix yeah uh no it's on crave tv oh I don't it's on know crave what that tv is. okay yeah it's it's really good it's really good but mm. you could you could start watching it i think they play like the repeats and stuff too like mm -hmm. on i think it's on ctv yeah and uh but it's really really comical yeah it's How very about, comical. Uh, last man on earth you watch that one no that's yeah, great oh yeah for no. sure i love that one uh amy what's the uh what's the girl the one where the girl's in the uh kept uh, an underground bunker. Oh, 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 yeah. That was awesome, for um, sure. Kimmy. Yeah, Kim, oh, uh, saving Kimmy Schmidt or being something. Being Kimmy Schmidt? Bimmy, yeah, something like something that. Something like hilarious. that. I've only watched the first season of that. Mm, I haven't, I've only watched one season. Okay, so the mental health, that's uh, yeah, very important because concussions are a huge topic for sure, especially uh, in my life. And uh, so the mental health issues, that started in like high school? Um, I think probably all my life. Really? Like okay. I, yeah, I dealt with a lot of stuff all mm. my life. Mm. Um, I was diagnosed with a learning difficulty, which I haven't actually said out loud ever. Um, when I was quite a bit younger, I was put in a, I was put in a, I don't even know how to, what the proper term would be for it today, but it was, it was basically a class mm -hmm. for slower kids, but I got in the class and they're like, oh my gosh, like she doesn't like, she shouldn't be in here. Mm -hmm. So essentially my brain is considered like a secondary processor. So it just takes me a little bit more time to process things. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly enough, it depends on the environment I'm in. If I'm in an environment that makes me super nervous and scared, mm -hmm. then it takes me a long time. Like if I'm around people that yep. I find intimidating or whatever, then I, I get really scared. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in like an environment where I'm surrounded by uh, encouraging, thoughtful uh, people, mm -hmm. supportive people, yeah. it's like it doesn't exist. It is a it's baffling to me. Like it's night and day. I've worked with people who I could barely speak in front of. Mm -hmm. And then I've worked with people, it's blah, 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 blah. you know, Amazing. you're just all over the place. Yeah. And, uh, but it, I think it depends because you're, you know, it's all an energy thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's all this energy. Like it's your energy. Um, like I feel like I'm very intuitive. So, uh, when I'm around people, people who I feel could be threatening. Mm -hmm. I feel like even though maybe consciously I think I'm not afraid, there's a subconscious part of me that kind of goes, whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. We're not liking the feel here. We're not liking the vibe. It's like that limbic brain so important. system. Yeah. yeah. Who, who you spend your time. Henry Burris on this podcast said, you become the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah, and that's, it's so true. That's one. I, I remember going to a workshop where they emphasized that years and years ago. Um, and it is true. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And I've tried to teach my kids that yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to be surrounded by people who are positive and uplifting mm -hmm. and, you know, who have your back. And it's, it's, you know, in this business, we meet a lot of different people mm -hmm. constantly on an ongoing basis. And I like to, I really like to encourage everybody. I honestly, I feel like there are so many people out there doing good things, mm -hmm. but sometimes you meet people and it's just like, I'm sorry. I just, you know what I mean? You, mm -hmm. you just have to, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard, but uh, it's so true. Like yeah. it's so true. How does, uh, like when you're young, how does that manifest itself? Like, is it like the mental health issue? Is it word? Is it a voice in your head or is it a, just the way you feel or like, you mean the depression yeah, and anxiety? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I think like I was so young when my mother passed away, mm -hmm. like a four month old baby. So I shouldn't have known that she passed away. Mm -hmm. But yet I remember the very day I was walking with my grandmother. I, I don't remember how old I was, but mm -hmm. I remember I can see it right now. I was walking with her. And we loved to go. She would, we would walk to lunch. We would walk all over the place. Like she was my favorite person. Um, and I was holding her hand and I just remembered 
out of the blue saying, where's my mom? And I did have a stepmom, but I, I was never, no, I don't remember anybody saying this is your stepmom, but I do remember being in my dad's wedding as a flower girl. Right. So, yeah. um, but I just remember and my grandmother, they, they, I was being raised as if this person was my mom and they mm-hmm. figured out oh, you're so young, you won't know any different, but I did. Like I always wow. remembered this is, you know, and so I remember asking her like, where's my mom? And I think from, I can remember lying in, uh, in bed as a very, very, like a toddler and thinking really deep thoughts, like ridiculous, like Stephen Hawking, deep thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like I was so sad yesterday, by the way, I was, I was like, I literally cried several times yesterday really? just thinking I was such a big fan of his, mm-hmm. um, and his work will remain and his, like, I don't know if you've ever read a brief history of time or watched, Not the whole did thing. you, did you watch, uh, um, the biopic? Yeah. Okay. The mm-hmm. theory of everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was at the pub where some of those last year in England. Okay. We were at the pub where some of the scenes for that movie was shot. Um, anyway, I remember lying there just as a kid thinking, you know, what would be here if there was, if there were no people, like mm-hmm. there's just like, what would be here? That's really like, there's, there's a planet and there's people on it, but what if there was no planet with people on it? And I used to freak myself out. Like I'd ask myself all these really, and people would, think I was really weird for stuff like that and uh, maybe I was but I always had these just deep questions that I was like I need to know these things like mm-hmm. I need to know these things very curious like all the time very mm-hmm. curious um, so I don't know like I feel like um, growing up maybe I was a little different I don't know if it was necessarily because of the learning difficulty mm-hmm. uh, but I did feel very different I grew up in a kind of a, a poor family as well mm-hmm. Um, and I remember getting teased a lot, you know, didn't have the brand name stuff, didn't have like all the cool things that the mm-hmm. other kids, I remember wanting a pair of painter pants. Do you remember painter Ooh, pants? Of course. Yeah. I totally and they those. were 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of money to spend on a pair of painter pants, like mm-hmm. a pair of pants in general, like that 20 bucks. And I remember I begged and begged and begged and begged and begged and begged until I finally, I, I got my first job, I could think when I was eight selling, you remember Regal? I don't even know if that, ex- uh, remember the yes, magazine? I definitely remember Regal. I went around to anybody yeah. who would let me sell, like I would sell this stuff because I wanted to buy mm-hmm. my own painter pants, like yeah. had to have those painter pants. I don't know. So I got, I, I got bullied a lot. Like I, this, I don't know if I want to get into all the stories, but there were, some of them were pretty, um, like I had a knife pulled on me when I was, uh. 10, 11, it was, we used to take foster kids Mm -hmm. and, uh, we had one girl and in her defense, she was, she was definitely, she had some learning difficulties, Mm -hmm. disabilities. And, uh, I think she was going through some really tough, you know, if you're in a foster home and you're being bounced around a lot, no one's adopting you. You know, as a kid, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that till much later, Mm -hmm. but she, she pulled a knife on me at one point and, uh, my stepmom kind of stepped in and. I was like, wow, like I didn't know what was going to happen, but, um, we had, I'm huge on this gun issue right now going on this, the whole, yep. you know, it's kids terrible. in the States. Yep. Um, we had another kid stay with us who stole my dad's hunting rifles mm-hmm. and took off. And I remember getting a knock on the door from the RCMP telling us everybody's got to lay on the floor. So we basically spent the day laying on the floor <laughs> because he was shooting at all the houses oh in the neighborhood. Stuff like that. Like there was some pretty, I don't know. There was just a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff um, that I've been writing about for a very long oh, time. Good. That helps too, right? It, I would imagine. It does. It mm-hmm. does help. And uh, so I don't know if it's because of some of that stuff. I know that mental health issues do run in my family. Mm-hmm. Um, that's definitely been a thing. Um, we, I, my cousin, one of my cousin's children who I babysat growing up, he, uh, he took his own life when he was in his early 20s mm. and videotaped it oh my gosh. and left it for his family wow. to watch. Yeah, it was pretty heavy, pretty heavy. That's and uh, um, he was a really beautiful little boy, but he was very quiet, mm-hmm. very quiet. And I kind of lost touch with him because I was older and I moved away and mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. We had a, had a lot of cousins growing up, like a big, my grandmother had 12 kids. So I feel bad. Like, I feel like, you know, why wasn't I there? Why wasn't I there to talk to him? Why Mm -hmm. wasn't like, why did he go through this? Why did he want to do that? It was, it was pretty, pretty crazy. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so now, uh, you've got two daughters of your own, you're a, you're a mother and how does, uh, sort of the lessons that you've learned throughout your life and overcoming all these things, uh, 
how does that look as a mother? Like you obviously see your, your, your children as sort of a, a smaller version of you, I, I would imagine. Right? Uh, and, they wouldn't like to hear it that yeah. way. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, in so much that you, you take the lessons you've learned and sort of, I, I know having three kids of my own, it's very hard to teach people. It's more by doing things through ex- showing them example, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. And, and showing them how you do it. And then, exactly. then you notice, wow, yeah. they're, like, they're actually doing the things I do. But if you tell them to do things, it's not even on the radar, yeah. right? It doesn't yeah. exist for sure. Uh, do you I, look for the things that in them that were a, a problem or a hard time for you when you were young? I do. And I try not to though, mm-hmm. because I keep reminding myself they are not me That's and right. they have been raised very differently than mm-hmm. I was raised. I'm not saying that I'm the perfect parent cause I've made plenty of mistakes, mm-hmm. uh, and still do. Um, but, uh, I try to encourage them to follow their dreams. I try to, one of my, my oldest is in college right now taking pre-animation. Okay. She's really awesome. into art. And someone told her when she was really little, like, you know, they brought up the whole starving artist thing, yeah. which put, and she still remembers it to this day mm-hmm. and she holds on to it. And I've been working ever since to get that out of her head. Well, you're like, an artist, you know, a well, voice artist at yeah, least. I, I mean, guess so. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I've been telling her, like I said, you you can totally like have a career doing what you love. Yeah. Like, you know, you, totally you can have it. It looks, it can look different for everybody yep. and you just have to. So I think I kind of steered her a little bit towards because I was trying to figure out like, she's not the kind of person who would be good at having a gallery of her artwork, mm-hmm. but animation is something yeah. she's really into. And so I was like, well, you might want to look at this and, and she did a co-op in high school and she loved it. And, you know, I said, well, that's how you find out. Like I keep saying, you got to go and have all these experiences mm-hmm. so you can figure out what you like and what you don't like. And she loves it. She went to Mercury Filmworks, which is one of the top three uh, in Ottawa. And uh, they're fabulous people. Mm-hmm. Um, they've come in to talk to them at Algonquin and... Um, very positive like they they nurture it's a nurturing environment mm-hmm. and I said that's the main thing like you want to work in an environment where you feel like you're being nurtured and she was only working on production things not the area she most wants to work mm-hmm. but I said did you like it she goes oh my gosh I loved it and I said could you see yourself working in that kind of environment mm-hmm. and she was yeah and, and I said well there you go mm-hmm. so work hard yep. get through this program and Algonquin has an excellent program. They have an excellent higher rate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as a parent, you just want your kids. I I want my kids to be happy. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able to, you know, make enough money to live on so that they don't have to live in my basement forever. You know, that kind of thing. Not that I probably would let them. I'm the kind of mom that'd be like, oh, stay. Of course. It would be sad when they move out. It will be so sad. But at the same time, you know, and I actually had this conversation with my oldest last night. Sydney, uh, I said, you know, I don't want, I don't want to see you go, but I want to know that you're be able to stand on your own two feet and pay your own bills mm-hmm. because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, I want to have that peace of mind that, you know, when I am gone, that you're okay, like mm-hmm. that you can take care of yourself, you know? And, um, it's been, it's been challenging because both my kids grew up as Chio kids. Okay. They're both, um, Sydney was diagnosed when she was three years old and I was expecting her sister at the time. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and uh, she was diagnosed at CHEO with a heart condition called long QT syndrome, which is another reason I like to volunteer and fundraise for CHEO. Mm-hmm. What, um, what, what's that? It's, oh my gosh, it's so hard to explain. It's um, an irregularity in the heartbeat, which can cause it to go into um, cardiac arrest. Yeah, defibrillation. Sorry, I'm coughing here. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, oh, you I mean, know, of course. You're well, I, the reason I asked that is, I mean, my when in 1985, my brother passed away from a heart condition at Chio, <laughs> and uh, oh, I the, did not know that. I'm yeah, sorry. I, well, that's. I mean, that's my the whole sort of. What was it? It, uh, it? He had a hole in his heart. He also had one lung. He had been <clears> born with this. It was, oh. Yeah, congenital heart disease. And uh, well, my, a quick recap of my story is 1985 when my brother passes away October 30th 1985 I made a promise to him that the, the goal and the dream of uh, me making it to the NFL I would never stop trying to do it it's my my major obstacle in my life is this and I could have easily just given up and quit and I, I'm so I made this promise and the next 10 years it was mostly failure mm-hmm. injuries and things not going my way like in your story people just telling me I couldn't do it it's impossible to go from Ottawa to the NFL it's it's impossible to uh 
you know, to, to go to the smallest football playing school in Canada and then make it to the NFL. And uh, so the story actually starts in 85 earlier that year before my brother passed away. We were watching the Super Bowl. Dan Marino for the Miami Dolphins was playing. And that's when we sort of set the goal. So my, my brother passes away later that year, nine, nine months later, October 30th. Ten years of failure. And then, you know, the actual me making it to the NFL moment was October 30th, 1995, 10 years to the day of my brother passing away. And the person who told me I'd, I'd made the team was Dan Marino. He walked in the room after my workout and said, hey, I heard you made the team. So, yeah. Oh, that yeah. is so special. Yeah, very special, right? Aww. It's a story of a few things. Cry. Yeah. <laughs> Get really emotional. Yeah. That's beautiful. You don't have tissues. You have tissues. No, just use your sleeve. You'll be fine. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, it is... It's story inspiring, of, though. Like it's that's that's very special. Yeah, it's inspiring. It is. I mean, terrible things are going to happen to to all of us. And mm-hmm. like I said earlier, it's about how we react to them, right? Instead of it being a, the thing that allowed me to quit, it was the thing that motivated me to keep going when things mm-hmm. weren't going my way. And it mm-hmm. was also a story of ten years of of if you want something bad enough, then you have to keep trying and keep mm-hmm. going and keep you know. Only when we look back at and you mentioned it earlier, connecting the dots. Only when we look back can we see the dots connect, right? Because yeah. going forward, it's just a failure and rejection and people telling you, you can't do it. But then when something you never give up and you look back and you're like, those are the reasons why. Those times when it seemed like there was nothing left for me to do. Those times when things weren't going my way were the things that were sending me in that direction. Mm. So that's why, I mean, I ask about the heart, the heart problem, because I, I know now the condition he passed away from back then is uh, they can operate on the person and, and the person can have a long life. It wasn't available? No, it was not available. No, the only opportunity then what was going on was uh, baboon hearts. Do you remember that? They, yeah. They, they're putting baboon yeah. hearts in people. And so that was, a, you know, the topic of conversation at my house. And I never really realized that... Uh, it was for real. You know what I mean? I was yeah. a kid and I'm like, okay, when, did you get your baboon heart yet today? You know, like jokes and stuff. And it was, uh, and then he, uh, unfortunately he got very sick and, and passed away very, very quickly. Uh, almost unexpectedly. He was, he made it to 19. How old was he? 19. Oh, 19. So yeah, I never really got to be an and how adult. How old were you then? Uh, 15. Oh. So four and a half years younger. Oh. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously my big brother. Yeah. Right. So, so your children have uh, a heart condition. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things that, like, to look at them, you would think, oh, wow, they look completely normal, healthy. Mm-hmm. And they are, for the most part. It's just with long QT, it's, uh, it's a sudden thing. So they're on medication, mm-hmm. um, and they get they go for their regular follow-ups. But um, if, if something was to happen, mm-hmm. it would happen, there would be, it, it would most likely be, boom, done, happen. Like, that's what... That's what they think happened to my mom at the what time. What do you mean, boom? Like- well, so with my mom, she passed out. She fainted on New Year's Eve. Okay. Um, and uh, they couldn't revive her okay. because they didn't have defibrillators back then. They said that probably would have been the only thing that would have saved her. We actually have a portable defibrillator at home. Wow. Um how do you take care of that? You have to charge the battery every yeah, year? Yeah, I just replaced the battery pack, actually. Um so we've never had to use it. That's the goal. Yeah. It's a peace of mind thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, so the girls go with their father. There are some family cottages that are kind of remote. Mm-hmm. So if they were, and he also has a sailboat. So if they were ever in a situation, it would buy them some time, right? And I didn't want them to grow up not being able to enjoy all these things. Mm-hmm. But I was pretty much a basket case when they were younger. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I it was a hard thing to wrap my head around and. Uh, my youngest, she was at CHEO in the neonatal unit for the first week, and they, they were talking like pacemaker surgery, and I was just like, what? They didn't think she was going to make wow. it. She, when she was born, they she was born at the Queensway Carlton. I went into early labor, and I called the Queensway Carlton. They had actually called me that day to say, you can't have your baby here because of my heart condition, because of the heart conditions, and they wanted it to send us to the Civic because the Heart Institute's right there. Okay. And I said, I think it's too late to get that paperwork <laughs> transferred. And they said, what do you mean? I said, I'm pretty sure I'm in labor. Oh, no, you're you're way too early. I said, no, I'm pretty sure I'm in labor. And so a few hours later, I showed up. I said, I told you. And literally, they're rushing me into a room. And I said, I'm pretty sure. Like, she's not waiting. And they said, oh, you got lots of time. And and sorry to be so graphic. They literally lift my leg. Oh, there she is. <laughs> like, that's how fast. I said, I know. I am having her. I can feel. Wow. I can feel having a baby. So it was pretty, uh, it was pretty crazy. But um she, yeah, so her heart rate was in the 50s. Mm-hmm. 
It's pretty low. It's supposed to be like what one thirty or one twenty for a baby, a newborn. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow, I, they took thirty her, beats per minute. Is that what 50, you said? Oh, 50? Fifty. Okay. Yeah, still though for a newborn. Yeah. And so they literally they took her away. They rushed her into this machine looking thing, and I'm like, what is happening i probably dropped a lot of f-bombs at the time and i was like well i'm going with her in the ambulance they know you can't come with her and i'm like well i'm not staying here and they said well you just had a baby you have to stay here i said my baby i'm gonna be where my baby is i'll never forget that day so i got my i had to check myself out and uh my cousin was working in the cardiology department at chio at the time thankfully um so she was there when when my little Grace arrived. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know how they do it. Oh, my gosh. That's why I'm not in the medical profession. That's mm-hmm. why I could never be a first responder. I am far too emotional. Mm-hmm. Far too emotional. Um, and just seeing the other people that were in there and their kids, like mm-hmm. spending all that time in there. We had we were in a room with four other families. Yeah. And I was nursing Grace at one point, and they, the doctors, they rush in and they pull the curtains because they were resuscitating another baby in the oh. next bed. And the parents are right outside, and I'm just sitting there, and I start sobbing. Like, I'm just sobbing because, you know, I'm holding her really tight, and I'm sobbing, but I could... You just feel for that family because you know how you would feel if that was your kid, right? Yeah. And um, I met so many amazing parents, and, you know, not all their kids made it. So giving back to Chio has been something that's, um, there's a group actually of cardiology parents called Heart of Champions. And I've met some pretty amazing, strong parents through that group. And I just, you know, my kids, their conditions seem to be like, whoa, they pale in comparison. Yes. Yeah, they could die. You know, they, they could, I know that I know every day, but I mean, it's the same, like you could die walking across the street. Right. Um, so it it uh, that was really hard for me to wrap my head around. I was angry for a long time, like mm-hmm. why? Like I and I didn't have kids till later because I always wondered what happened to my mom. So I did a really? ton of research, yeah. ton of research. Mm-hmm. I got copy of her, you know, autopsy from medical archives. Mm-hmm. I got doctors to look at it. I I and then I had like three doctors say it's probably just a coincidence because my mom's mom also died when she was in her early 20s after my mom was born. So there are two women, two deaths, you know, and Mm -hmm. I was like, there's something that doesn't feel right about this. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research and then, and then I don't find out about the heart conditions. But you know what? I feel like, you know, things are happen for a reason and I wouldn't trade my kids for anything. And Mm -hmm. I, maybe I wouldn't have had kids if I'd known before, right? Exactly. And I, I wouldn't trade them for anything. It's been a, it's probably been the most enriching experience of all my experiences, like being a mom. Mm -hmm has it's my favorite thing Mm -hmm. even though it's been the hardest and most challenging thing it's my favorite it's every day is a new day every day is and seeing you know when you have your kids for the first time when they're really little it's like you get to see everything all over again Mm -hmm. for the first time through their eyes too right and then that is so special itself like Mm -hmm. just you know and just being able to try and raise these two little beings to maybe go forward and do something positive in the world mm-hmm. to make the world a better place. Right. Yeah. You know, so no, yeah, for sure. That's what it's all about. That's what I mean. When days when you're trying to, when you're struggling with what your problems are and you look at it, your, your children, it's, it explains it all while you're there. Right. It's, it's yeah. not get, get through all that other stuff and get to that. Cause yeah. You know, the, all the other stuff with the depression, I was going to touch the, I think the most frustrating thing about that is depression can come on for me. I was told it was a chemical it was because of this, my brain, the way it's chemically wired mm-hmm. and that it would be a problem for the rest of my life. So I've accepted that and I've figured out how to work with it. I haven't quite figured out how to stabilize my emotions, I, but it's, it, it's getting better. It, it's getting better all the time. I didn't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I was prescribed a medication that apparently could be fatal with the heart condition I have, but because of a very awesome pharmacist, uh, caught it before they actually gave it to me. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky that way, but, um, I wanted to see if I could do it without drugs. So that's, you know, but it can have like, it, it's, it's all over the place. There's no rhyme or reason. Like things can be going really well and Mm -hmm. I'll have like a panic attack or I'll have an episode of depression. And it's, I, I've figured out how to get through it, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, the weirdest thing though. And I know a lot of people haven't figured that out yet, which 
and I, especially young kids, yeah. like when they're going through For it sure. and they don't, you know, and we hear about these stories of people who, you know, take their lives mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. And because they haven't figured it out or they don't understand it and it's, it's hard and they don't, they don't know what's happening in their bodies or their brains. And that's where I think more, we have to do more education and talk about it more and just say, you know, ride it out, like ride the wave. Mm-hmm. It's, you can do it. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the reasons I like to, to talk and, and go and, and share like things that I've done or, yeah, you know, that, yeah. that's the most important place to place to put our message because I mean, high school without anything going wrong is a tough time. Oh, right? can you, if, oh. you know, I wouldn't go back for you all think about your hardest, oh. biggest struggles. And it was yeah. there in yeah. those hallways, yeah. right? There's so much going on in your brain. Do you know how many people have reached out and apologized to me since high school? Wow. Yeah. That's a <laughs> lot. I should probably do some apologizing. A lot. Too. <laughs> it's, it's very, you know what I feel, feel like it is. I feel like it's, you get to a point in your life, you have your own family and you have kids and you change. Yep. You change and you look back and you're like, oh, and I've, I've even, I did it with a couple of old boyfriends. I, I called and I'm like, look, I, I think I was kind of a jerk. I was young. I was immature wow. and I'm really sorry. Mm-hmm. And it was good closure. It felt really good mm-hmm. to kind of, and it was, it was, it meant a lot to me to have those people from my past reach out to mm-hmm. say, sorry, we were That's such That's a hard jerks. thing to do. Right? It, it is to hard to do. call people you haven't talked to in a while. Yeah. Even if they're your friends, isn't it a hard time to make that first step? And then once it happens, you're back in the, you know, back like nothing, no time had expired. Yep. That's what I find yep. for sure. Most, most of it's been received really well and most mm-hmm. people are, but you know what? Everyone that I've done it with has been like, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Like, thank you for that. You know, not that, not that I thought they were wasting a lot of time thinking about it. It's mm-hmm. just for me, right. it was like, you know, it weighs heavy on your soul. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I like trying to sleep at night. So, yep. so just clearing the conscience and, uh, and you know, I want to. I want my words to be true. Like I want to try to do my best. I've. I think we all lie to ourselves to a certain extent about things. Mm-hmm. And I've done a lot of lying to myself. And I'm. You know, that's one of the things that I've worked really hard to be more honest with myself. And I want to be. I want that to be a message for my kids too. Like, be more honest with yourself. Like, yeah. you know, own it. Like, don't don't try to fake it through life. I know we all do to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. We have to. Like, I won't deny, like, I've been, I've actually had people send me really nasty messages saying, you know, oh yeah, sure, you have depression. You sound so upbeat on the radio. I said, mm-hmm. well, first of all, I have to be, that's my job. Like, I, I can't, yeah. you know. What kind of radio show would that be? <laughs> I, I, I tell you one thing though, it's been a lifesaver for me, having a job to go to every day that forces me to be that way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, sometimes I feel like the universe kind of guided me in a direction where I could be that because mm-hmm. it helps, like it I, it really, really does help because mm-hmm. you can't, you can't be all down and glum. Like you, you can't. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, it's awesome. Yep. Like it's, it's amazing to be able to, and it helps me, it pulls me out of it too. Like if I'm feeling that way mm-hmm. at the beginning of the day, I, I do other things to get myself in a good mood. I will randomly start laughing sometimes. Yep. Like I just, there doesn't even have to be a comedian in front of, I just mm-hmm. randomly start laughing. That's great. My girls think it's crazy. I said, mm-hmm. I just need to laugh. And you know, I just feel like in this moment I need mm-hmm. to laugh mm-hmm. and it does, it feels so amazing. Yep. A comedy and club is great for that. You brought up comedy because like, I love. I haven't been as much lately as I used to go all the time. Like I to, used go to go in uh, those. Uh, if you're not having a great day, and sometimes you don't feel like going because something's happening, but you go there and you get up on stage, and it's amazing. You're laughing. You're making people laugh, and people who are getting up after you or before you are laughing. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. a, it's a special yeah. place in the world. Do you know Steve Dillon by any chance? Uh, He's no. a he does stuff through Yuck Yucks. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's also, he's originally from Ottawa. He's a comedian, but uh, okay. I think he works mostly out of Toronto now. Mm. But he's been, he's done a few things with uh, different people. Like in, like, yeah, you may recognize him if you ever saw him. I just wondered, if, I don't know if he's been back recently, but. Mm. Uh, I, I haven't seen him. I've been doing comedy for a little over three years. And I mean, I've seen How did of, you fall into that? Uh, it came through motivational speaking. I was, uh, there's a lot of jokes and humor in, yeah. my, in my speech and just the right person at the right time saw me and I asked if I'd ever done comedy and I'd always wanted to do comedy. And uh, uh, the actual, the words were, uh, have you ever done comedy before? And I'm like, no. And he went, well, you just did. So after um, my after my right. fifteen minute version of my speech, right? Because um, having done it so much, I'm good at interacting with the audience really yeah. well. I have a lot of tips, or not tips, but tricks and stuff to sort of get an audience on your side and be likable and that sort of stuff. So that part of it was taken care of. I just wrote down some jokes, and uh, I mean, 
if you're honest and you tell a story and like, if there's truth to it and there's a punchline and you know how to talk in front of people, it's not that hard. I mean, people are like, it's terrifying. I struggle with mm. the comedy when you're talking about mental health because I find humor is really good for me personally mm. to get through some stuff. And I, I always appreciate humor and yep. comedy, but not everybody's there. Mm -hmm. And I've had people get mad at me before for making, and I wouldn't say they were self-deprecating, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like, it was my way of trying to show a lighter side of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. And people, some people are just not there yet. So yep. I, I struggle with that. So I'm trying to get better at it, mm -hmm. trying to get better at it because I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people struggling with mental health issues and most of them say, yeah, like humor is so important, but there's so many people that feel like, well, if you have mental health issues, depression, anxiety, whatever, that you, you don't want to have fun or you, you know what I mean? Yep. Like that you're, mm -hmm. it's like, no, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. like totally opposite. We want to have more fun. Like mm -hmm. we want to, we want to break out of that. Right. Yeah. So I go to the comedy club an hour before it opens or as people are arriving and people come in and they're quite reserved and the, the, slightly make eye contact with you maybe they've seen your picture on the billboard or, or whatever in the advertising and they sit down and some of them will say hi and then they start to get their drinks and the lights go down and then the comedy show happens and everyone's laughing and on the way out people are skipping and hugging each other and nobody goes out without yeah. laughing like it's, it's just awesome. an unbelievable environment it's awesome yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's an amazing good. thing for sure and i really enjoy it and i, I hope it'll always be part of my life so it's just like sure. once a week i do i do it once a week uh my show mark yeah. Hatfield's friday night is once a week every friday at seven but uh i'll be on other shows like uh april 12th 13th 14th i'm hosting all that that weekend uh last night i did the just for laughs uh, showcase so there and i'll do the open mics too which are uh wednesdays uh at yuck yucks and tuesdays but yeah uh, whenever sometimes they have a show at uh, broadways or uh, you know in orleans yeah. or uh boston pizza in cornwall I'll do those too and it's fun and every room's different right you know you gotta learn to work a crowd if they're sitting on bar stools if they're sitting low tables high ceilings you know there's just so many variables that that every time you go out it's like going to a different gym and working out a different muscle because you get better at, at, at everything and, yeah. and it's like you know when you were at the just for me it's different to speak at a gala which i yeah. spoke at two years ago which is really hard oh, did you oh, yeah. okay cool because there's a uh, it's on it's on youtube 10, 000, I will find 10,000 10, views. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there's a dance floor in front of you. It's a lot harder. They're at circular tables. You got to get people to turn their chairs. Like there's just yeah. so many little tricks and things you learn to sort of capture an audience. And it's what it's all about. And it's why it's fun. And, you know, it's something that uh, not many people have. Perf well, nobody's perfected it. Some have come close and uh, you just keep trying and keep. Yeah. And you'll have your bad days. Like you said earlier, you got to be thick skinned to be an artist. Some days people don't get it. Some days you can get up there and nobody, everyone's having such a good time. They don't even listen to you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like yep. the sound system's not good enough and you just keep going. You do yep. the best you can and you learn from every experience. That's true. Yeah. That's been an hour and 13 minutes. I'm oh my goodness. Very inspiring. Your stories are amazing and I'm going to keep following you. Uh, you know, not, literally following you <laughs> wow, that'd be weird but i have been lately right seeing you at events and stuff and uh that was amazing thank you very much thank you very much i really Mark. appreciate it we'll thank take some pictures i'm and, coming uh, to see a show oh good yes i'll Friday. bring a whole table of rowdy gals do it you let me know when you're coming it'll okay. be awesome